Hey everyone, I'm so glad to announce that we've actually hit a thousand subscribers on the channel. I want to thank you all for your support. You've been incredible with all the comments uh, and you keep us going. So I just wanted to say thank you uh, for that. Uh, this time we're back with another terrain tutorial and uh, we're taking you to Icewind Dale. Um, we created some winter slash Arctic tundra terrain for uh, my Storm King's Thunder campaign. Uh, strap in, here we go. So first things first, I found a fairly long, condensed piece of styrofoam that was used to pack um, some sort of appliance, I can't remember what it was. Um, and some styrofoam was actually quite loosely packed. This one is actually very condensed and very tough, which is why I decided to use it for this snow terrain. Uh, and then using a really sharp utility blade, uh, and a brand new blade at that, you want to make sure it's sharp so it cuts through, I began to cut and break away the shape that I was looking for. In this case, I was looking for a snowy, um, kind of slope uh, so that it could gradually um, degrade on one side but end in a rock face on the other. In the end, I ended up with this cool little shape, a um, bit of a hill with a straight drop on one side, and I made sure that I had a bit of a lip because I wanted a built-up snowdrift on top. Now this stage requires quite a bit of caution and uh, adult supervision. Um, I'm using a lighter here to actually seal the styrofoam. I found that when I uh, heated it up with a lighter, um, it actually created kind of a hard crust um, around the styrofoam, uh, hopefully uh, adding longevity. This is a little trick I found online uh, from a number of different snow terrain builders. I'd also say it's best to wear a some sort of mask. Um, obviously the fumes off styrofoam isn't something you want to be inhaling. And here I started to dry fit some of the um, tree bark that I was using for the rock texture um, that will go on the front and then the right and the left side. Um, I just got a number of different pieces and then used a glue gun to adhere it to the styrofoam in order to allow it to, to stick. I also felt that I had to hold it down for quite some time just to make sure that uh, I got a really good connection. I was done adding the rocks, I kind of realized that um, the shape was a little too precise uh, and not quite so natural. So I added some a uh, bit of a snow shape on the side, as you can see. Uh, and in retrospect, I probably should have had it a bit more abnormal. Then I used some um, spackling and I used the stuff that uh, starts pink and then it dries uh, white just to kind of let me know when it was done. It took actually quite a bit of time because what I did here was actually um, quite a bit uh, and deep, I guess you could call it. Uh, but all I did here was uh, stick some spackling all through the cracks and in all the crevices just to blend those rocks together so that they don't look like separate rocks but actually uh, one natural rock face.
And this is how the cliff face looked once I had filled it all in. This stage I started painting um, by laying down a base coat of uh, burnt umber, just craft paint that I found at uh, the uh, dollar store, um, and I gave a pretty liberal covering of this um, to provide a really great uh, base for the rest of the paints. At this stage, I shaded the snow um, with my airbrush using a Lothurn Blue, it's a Citadel paint. Um, specific uh, for airbrush it's in their airline um, if you don't have an airbrush you can use just regular paint or uh, complete a bit of a wash uh, for this stage uh, but I found it really quick and smooth to use an airbrush Next, I touched up the uh, raw umber color, and then I did a mid-tone dry brush of oatmeal. And remember, again, with dry brush, you want to load your brush up with paint, and then you want to wipe most of it off so that when you're brushing it across, lightly across the rock, it's just catching on the highest spots. For a final dry brush highlight, I used uh, an oatmeal color. Um, and again, same way, loaded my brush, wiped most of it off, and then just tried my best to, touch, to hit the raised areas. I used a bit of a smaller brush here because I wanted to be a bit more precise. My next step was to add um, Citadel water effects, and you can use any effects product, um, whether it be from Citadel or uh, any other Scenics company. Um, but here I just dripped it on. I wanted a bit of a wet look. Um, lots of ice uh, kind of gives it that frigid uh, feel. Did some drips down the rock, as you can see as well. One of the most fun parts for me was actually creating the, the icicles um, that would drip off uh, the snowbank and down the rock. Um, all I did was use some leftover acetate um, or overhead sheets um, and used my glue gun to run it along, starting with a larger bead and then tapering it down into kind of a thinner end. Once the icicles were dry, I cut around the acetate, um, allowing uh, it to still be the backing for the icicles. And then I just took a glue gun and adhered them to the snow and the rock face uh, using glue. Uh, don't worry about overflow of the glue onto the rocks or the snow. It just looks like more ice once it's dried.
the final step um, for the cliff was to take a mixture of white glue, baking soda, and a little bit of white acrylic paint. Um, and there's no exact formula to this, but you basically want a toothpaste -y kind of gritty mixture um, for the snow on top. And all I did was take globs of this using a foam brush and applied it to the top uh, until I was happy with the buildup of snow. Part two of this project is to create the actual icy tundra um, terrain board that the cliff and all of my trees will live on. Here I cut out a 20 by 20 inch piece of poster board or foam core and then I had uh, this textured wallpaper lying around that I thought would be perfect. You can get it at any hardware um, or uh, decor store a piece of the wallpaper in order to fit the foam core. Then to adhere uh, the wallpaper to the foam core I used an adhesive spray. Uh, this adhesive spray I just found at uh, the dollar store. Uh, I tried tacky glue at first but uh, it wasn't quite, didn't give it the right coverage that I was looking for. Uh, so I went to the spray instead and of course I sprayed in my garage uh, you definitely don't want to do that inside. I applied a quick base coat of a raw umber uh, spray paint, followed by a dry brush of soft suede, and this is a mid-tone dry brush. Uh, and I decided kind of as I went what colors I applied here, um, and it all depends on the type of terrain board that you're looking to create. I then followed the mid-tone with another mid-tone dry brush of golden brown. And finally, I wanted to warm up the tones a little bit with a burnt sienna dry brush. Next, it was off to my airbrush um, to create a kind of a base for the snow that I was going to uh, add later. Um, I started off with a base coat of uh, white. Uh, pure white out of my airbrush. This was a Vallejo white. Um, but I'm just creating um, random shapes kind of uh, along with the texture uh, that I can see in the uh, wallpaper. Once I was happy with the white, uh, I went to Lothurn Blue through my airbrush again and uh, kind of did a bit of an outline um, sort of shading of the white just to give it that cold, um, icy feel.
And then I just simply added snow to um, the board much in the same way that I did with the cliff. The only thing that I did was made sure that I kind of followed the same pattern. I wanted it to feel like a strong wind had blown across this tundra and uh, kind of windswept the snow. And finally, I just wanted to show you that I actually shaded some of these random little pieces of um, styrofoam uh, that I created into little snow banks. Um, I even created some corner pieces with some icicles on them that I could um, basically drape over the corner of terrain, buildings and such. Um, after I did this, I also added a coat of snow on top of it as well. And here's a final shot of how it looked at a table. And as usual, be sure to subscribe and check us out at facebook.com slash for more updates. See you soon.